Good morning, everybody. It is game day. We are about four and a half hours away from kickoff, and we've got some last-minute game notes, and they're worth going over. These ones are actually more worth going over than usual, because we actually had some pretty interesting news yesterday. This is all relatively old, but uh, Kenny McIntosh and Derek Young have been activated. So both guys expect to make their regular season debut today. So that's very interesting, and it's going to be very exciting to some people. Obviously, a lot of people are intrigued by Kenny McIntosh's potential, and Derek Young was a, I mean, he wasn't a big-time player for us last year, but he was a unique player, and in many ways, he does add some stuff to this offense that no one else really can, because he can do some things that are unconventional for a receiver. So um, to talk about these two guys real quick, McIntosh, I would guess that he takes the place of DJ Dallas. Now, Carroll said that DJ Dallas is healthy, healthy enough to play. He said that on Friday. But um, my best guess is that they're going to say, well, McIntosh is more healthy, so we're going to play him and let Dallas heal up another week. Because I don't think you can carry Walker, Charbonnet, McIntosh, and Dallas. I, I think you do have to... Uh, trim one of those guys and if McIntosh is up then I think Dallas is down and I think a lot of people are going to be okay with that because they want to see what McIntosh can do they want to see if there's anything there that maybe Dallas doesn't have so going to be a unique opportunity for him I, I don't think he gets on the field very much on offense but he'll do special team stuff um Derek Young is interesting right because I, I guess, you know, you can forget about Cody Thompson, right? Because if Derek Young is going to be active, then Cody Thompson is probably sitting. But is that enough? Like, remember, because of the Jordan Brooks situation, you might have to activate Devin Bush. And if you're giving Devin Bush an active roster spot, that's another guy you have to bump down. And we've already shown that we don't really want to bump down Eskridge. We want Eskridge to be part of this. And it seems like there's some real devotion to getting him on the field. And that can only happen if he's active. So I don't think it's going to be Eskridge. So is it going to be maybe some reserve offensive lineman that we've still got dangling around? Is it going to be somebody like a Cameron Young or a Miles Adams? So I'm interested to see who we deactivate to make room for these guys. So that's about it in terms of the uh, activations from injury. But... We are quickly running out of injured players to make excuses with. Not that these guys were really part of any big excuses. So that's definitely good news. Um, we also had uh, Q Blue Kelly get waived. So hopefully he finds his way to the practice squad, I guess. Um, obviously, we picked him up before the season started, and there was some excitement that he would be a guy that Carroll could develop over the course of a year plus. But um, if we were to lose him now, then that would feel like kind of a waste of effort. Not that it was a big effort, but I think that a lot of people also looked at Kelly and went, there's some potential here. There, This is a potential Carroll-type corner, and they, they can see where this goes. But it can't go anywhere if he's not on the team. So hopefully Q Blue finds his way back to the practice squad. But if not, then I think that's going to bump some people out. Uh, Jason Peters was elevated from the practice squad for the third straight game, so that's it for him. Uh, Peters is going to presumably play in this game, and then he's uh, he can't be promoted anymore. At that point, you have to either sign him to the 53-man, or, I, I, I mean, would he retire at that point? Because I don't think he's going to hang around on a practice squad thinking that he's never going to get to actually play in a game. I think at that point he'd be like, um, you're welcome, but I'm going to peace out now. So, obviously, we don't want to spend the roster spot or the money on activating Peters. So, obviously, we're hoping that we can find a way without Jason Peters after this game. Because uh, right now, he's rotating in at right tackle. And when Abe Lucas comes back, we're not going to have a need for that. The issue is, when's Abe Lucas going to come back? He didn't practice this week. Expected to practice next week. But... If he does that, does that mean he's going to be ready for the next game, the Rams game? Probably not, right? When these players miss an extended amount of time, they usually need more than one week of practice. But 
maybe you can get by if you get Anthony Bradford back, and that kind of creates a chain reaction where you can at least have Kerhan. And I know Kerhan already kind of flunked out at right tackle a little bit, but he's not a terrible right tackle. He's just a flawed right tackle. He's a right tackle with big holes in his game. There are some things that he can do well. So maybe the Seahawks can just rotate Stone Forsyth and Jake Kerhan at right tackle for a game. And then hopefully the next game, which would be, I think, the Niners game, they have Abe Lucas back. Now that's a nice welcome back to the NFL moment for Abe Lucas having to deal with Bosa, but it is what it is. So hopefully we don't need to have Peters on the active roster because of the money and the roster spot it takes up. But um, obviously he's still part of our plan, so it wouldn't surprise me if we had to do it. So that's pretty much all the news from yesterday. So definitely some interesting stuff. The, the only other thing to mention would be the stuff said on Friday, which was basically assurance from Carroll that Brooks was almost certainly going to play. Uh, I haven't heard anything from the usual suspects in recent hours that Brooks has been confirmed he's going to play or not, so we'll, we'll, we'll still have to see. But Carroll sounded very confident that Brooks would play. He sounded confident that, um, well, Anthony Bradford's out, so we already know that he's not going to play. But um, you also had um, a DJ Dallas. Now, maybe DJ Dallas won't play because McIntosh needs this chance. But it sounded like Dallas was physically capable of playing if he really needed to. And he also said that Colby Parkinson is expected to play. So basically everybody who there was any doubt about is ready to go. So no real excuses for this one. The only significant or even somewhat significant injury really to this team right now is a Lucas. Uh, I know some people are going to say Bradford, but as of right now, Bradford is not a starter. And I don't get the sense that this team is looking to shove uh, Bradford out there in a starting role right now. I think they are content with him filling in for the inevitable Phil Haynes or Damian Lewis or I guess you could say Evan Brown related injuries. So we are about as healthy as can be, kind of like how Washington is. I talked about how Washington's uh, injury report coming into this game was really, really clean. Uh, ours is shaped up to be about the same. So there's nothing else you can say other than that the team should be poised for a win and they, they had better get it. All right, so if there's anything shocking in the uh, inactive list, I'll make another video later. But other than that, see you guys after the game. Let's get this one. Go Hawks and uh, get back on the right track.